Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7 Money Making Methods and Builds. So we're continuing our build of each of the Update 1.31 cars, this time with the Porsche 959. So this car can be tuned rather quite well for both Tokyo and Le Mans. I'm going to go with a Le Mans tune today mainly because it's a high speed car and I prefer hitting those higher speeds down the straight. Overall this is a fantastic machine with four wheel drive and rather quite easy to drive. However, there is two different ways to drive it, a sprint way and a more conservative fuel consumption way. But before we jump into the strategy, I'm going to show you how to buy this car, how to tune it, and I'll show you my tuning setup. So in terms of purchasing this car, it's currently in the Legends dealership. You're going to want to grab it sooner rather than later, to be quite honest, uh, before it disappears for another two to two and a half months. It comes in at 1.75 million, which is rather quite expensive. However, you will earn that money back within an hour or so uh, when running this build. In terms of its performance from standard, it's nothing too crazy. However, we are going to go for a very modified version of this one. So in terms of your parts, we'll start off with the wheels. I've just gone for a non-standard set um, at a bit of a higher um, sort of wheel size. So, you know, anything up from standard will basically give you the same performance. And then you want the width and the offset as both wide. Then onto the aero parts, you have two options only. So it's going to be aero type A at the front. And then the wing again is going to be aero type A. Then there is just one more thing you want to grab, so you want to go into the racing items. Uh, it's not bonnet pins, sorry about that. It's going to be roll cage type C. Either B or C usually give you pretty much the same performance points. I've just gone with C for the full race car um, roll cage look. Then in terms of your tuning shop from sports, you're going to need weight reduction at stage one. And that is literally going to be it from there. Club sports is high lift camshaft. And then we're going to have weight reduction stage two and power, uh, not the power restrictor, sorry, the ballast, uh, the power restrictor is not necessary. Um, in terms of semi-racing, it's racing crankshaft, fully customizable computer, high RPM turbocharger, fully customizable LSD, fully customizable manual transmission uh, for this one. And then at the bottom, we have weight reduction stage three and the increase of body rigidity. Next, we're going to move on to the racing category. Stroke up, engine balance tuning and polished ports, as well as the anti-lag system, racing intercooler, racing air filter, silencer, as well as the racing exhaust manifold, racing brake pads. And now you can go with the slotted or the drill, but I've actually gone with carbon brakes on this, so it's completely up to you. Brake balance controller, fully customizable suspension, racing clutch and flywheel, torque vectoring center differential, and then down at the bottom here, you need to ignore that by the way, I've got all sets of tires on, but we're going to be running with the racing hard tires um, on the bottom right. And then like I said, I do have the carbon ceramic brake kit, as well as a set of intermediates as we're going to be running this at Le Mans, and you want to be ready to cover off basically any rain that may come in. So with the tuning shop done, let's head over to the tuning sheet. Now we're going to be running this on racing hard tyres. They have fantastic life after the latest update. And we've obviously got the inters just in case. We've got the fully customizable suspension and body height I've set to 95 for both. In terms of the anti-roll bar, I've set it to 7 for both. And compression is going to be 35 for both. As well as the expansion, which is going to be 45 for both. Natural frequency 3.05 again across the board. Negative camber angle 0 at the front and 0.5 at the rear. With the toe angle of 0.05 in at the front and 0.10 in at the rear. In terms of the fully customizable differential, I've actually left this to standard. There is no changes on here. I feel like it's quite a comfortable setup to begin with. Then up here we have the fully customizable manual, not the racing transmission. And I've just put the gear ratios to 320, but I believe that comes as standard. Ballast, we've got it set to 34 with positioning of minus 49. No power restrictor on this build. In terms of your downforce, I've gone for a fully front zero, so minimum. And then again at the rear, we've gone for maximum. This does drop the performance points down. High RPM turbocharger, anti-lag system, which we have set to strong. Uh, so just ensure you've got it set to that. Racing intercooler, then we also have the racing air cleaner, the racing silencer, the racing exhaust manifold, the carbon brake system, racing brake pads. Uh, I do have the handbrake and the brake controller, you don't have to get them. Uh, and then we've got the racing clutch and flywheel, as well as your perma mods, such as stroke up, engine balance tuning, polished ports, racing crankshaft, and then obviously we have all of the weight reductions and the increased rigidity. Feel free to pause at any moment just to ensure that your sheet is correct and exactly matching mine. 
So with that done, let's go and have a look how to get into the Le Mans event. I know there's people that still don't know how to find this. So it's in Europe, up to the top left, uh, sorry, middle left. It's going to be in France. It's a 24-hour Le Mans racing circuit, or Le Mans. Click on that and then go into the middle event, which is the 700 event, and then just go ahead and enter it. Your car will be eligible and it will be able to use hards and inters. Now in terms of this build, how does it feel? Overall, there is two ways to drive it. You can essentially fuel mix six and absolutely hoon it and you'll get pretty much just two laps out of the fuel tank before you have to pit or you can do it the method that i'm going to show you which is a lot more conservative it essentially requires you to shift just as the red starts to fill up on the rev counter however with the high rpm turbocharger and the amount of power this thing's putting out it is still very capable to hit around about 190 to 195 mile an hour in the straights and it's still very very good through the corners that way you can essentially get three laps out of a tank of this car so it does require you to do a specific driving style that's why i've more gone to kind of showcasing that way of running it instead of just putting it a fuel mix six and doing two laps and kind of pitting every two laps you can do it that way if you want however if you do want to stretch it out and be kind of prepared for rain and such then i fully recommend doing the more conservative method i've noticed recently i'm getting a lot more rain usually on lap three instead of lap two so for me that's the way to run it so as soon as you start you want to put your fuel mix to six um, in terms of the weather radar zoom that out and just be ready for rain you're going to start monitoring that from lap two and in terms of driving it just short shift this thing massively as you'll see early on i was a bit too kind of i guess over excited in terms of the gearing what you're aiming for is as soon as the red bar fills up shift trust me this thing has a lot of power and you can really conserve fuel quite easily while still hitting those high numbers in terms of your straight line speed and your cornering speed you'll also be required to do a lot of lifting and coasting this again just improves your fuel consumption and will ensure that you can get free laps out of a tank of this thing now just a word of warning since the whole physics system has changed and all the cars feel different there may be a little bit of a time to adapt to these cars um, trail braking is a lot more powerful these days especially since we're lifting and coasting anyway it shouldn't be too much of a problem for you um, and the four-wheel drive system should keep you nice and stable once you get onto lap two you want to start monitoring the weather i found that the rain's a lot more random at this point and i'm getting a lot more rain from around about lap three to a lap four instead of at the end of lap two like it used to be so I'm just going to show you a quick clip of the perfect way to shift this car. It does have a lot of power and essentially what you're doing is as soon as you see red, just shift up. This will allow you to conserve your fuel and go a lot, lot longer as well as the lifting and coasting. So ensure you're doing that. I pitted at the end of lap three with pretty much no fuel left. It was a bit of a scruffy first run. Now we did start getting a lot of rain. This is essentially why I wanted to pit to cover it off. Um, I was going to go back on the hards and just go for a bit more of a sprint. However, due to rain, I decided to basically continue short shifting and essentially just get another three laps out of it. So again, we changed the tyres, we went onto the inters and let the rain come down and we're going to basically continue what we're doing. The four-wheel drive system in this car means there's a ton of grip and it shouldn't be no problem even in the rain. So by the time we're leaving the pits, as you can see, the rain's absolutely coming down and we're just going to continue to do what we're doing. Very much just short shifting and letting the power of the car take us down the straights and such. Now, a little bit later on, I also began to start lapping the AI. For some reason, they just seem to have a very, very bad race. In terms of my overall pace, I was hitting 405s um, on the dries, even with the extreme fuel saving of this car. So obviously turning the engine up, you will quite easily hit under four minute laps. And in the wets with extreme, fu extreme fuel saving on the inters, I was hitting around about 418 to four minutes 20. So they are very, very decent lap times especially considering we're not even running at full horsepower or really being very aggressive in terms of how hard we're hitting the gears and how quickly we're going through the track. So the AI just had a terrible race, as you can see in the background. I pretty much lapped, at, I think, up to around about P6 to, at the end. I could have essentially stopped and waited at the end of lap six just, but it was definitely far too kind of close for me to really risk that. So I did end up doing an extra lap. So as you're going to see at the end of lap six, I'm basically then going to have to do a bit of an extra pit stop. You may or may not have to do this. It's very weather dependent. Um, so, you know, if you do get a chance, just do the stop and wait like you used to do or like most people do. If you have to do an extra lap, just in all honesty, pit in, 
put a set of the faster hard tyres on and just fill it to full and go for an absolute sprint. Now the fuel consumption at Fuel Mix 1 of this car is absolutely terrible. You basically just get a, probably about a lap and a quarter out before it will go to empty um, if you're basically just going fully aggressive on it. And that's exactly what I did. At the end of the day, I didn't have to realistically take this lap. Um, at the end, there was around about a four minute one gap. And as you can see, when we come out of the pits, there's only about three minutes of the event to go. But I turned the engine up and I just went for a bit of a fun lap because honestly, it just gets the most out of the car. And it's an absolute brute in terms of its straight line speed. As you can see, it fuel mix one, even on a semi wet surface, I'm going to quite easily hit over 200 miles per hour. No problem. This is a rocket of a car down the straights. So eventually we did manage to finish the event up. As you can see, it absolutely drank its fuel at Fuel Mix 1 just for one lap, leaving only half a tank of fuel by the time we got across the line. And that is going to be it. So let's check in with how this car performed. So I completed seven laps in 31 minutes dead. Um, we basically lapped all of the cars on the grid. That's because they went into the pits as I came across the line for my lap, uh, seventh lap, uh, which meant they basically finished up on lap six. In terms of my fastest lap, even with the conserving of fuel, was a dry lap of a 4 minutes 5.236. So the one lap performance of this car is very, very quick, if I'm honest, even when you're being very, very conservative and lifting and coasting with the fuel. So overall, it's going to be a very easy and simple 825,000 credits in a very, very rocket build of a car. You can build this car for Tokyo. However, I'm a little bit kind of on edge about using it there, mainly because of the clean race bonus with cars after update 1.27. So if anyone does know if you can basically just do the usual war riding and quicker lap times, um, at Tokyo, still with the 1.31 cars, please let me know. Um, as long as you get the clean race bonus, I will start doing Tokyo builds for these cars as well. That is going to be it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Turn those notifications on so you don't miss an upload from me. I upload GT7 content each and every day for your viewing pleasure. And I will see you all in the next one. Don't forget to check out my Discord, my Twitter, and my donation link down in the description below. I'll see you all later on, guys. Take care. Peace.